Hello everyone. Welcome to Principles of Communication System lecture series. How to detect the PPM waves? Let consider a PPM wave S of T with uniform sampling and assume that the message signal at m of t is strictly band limited the operation of the type of ppm receiver may process it as follows the first one is the converts the received ppm waves in a pulse duration modulation or pulse width modulation wave with the same modulation integrate this pulse width modulation or pulse duration modulation wave using a device with a finite integration time thereby computing area under each pulse of the PDM waves. The sample the output of the integrator at the uniform rate to produce a pulse amplitude modulated wave whose pulse amplitude amplitudes are proportional to a single samples m into nts this is the single samples of a original ppm wave s of t the finally demodulate demodulated the pam wave to recover the recover the messaging signal m of t so this is the block diagram of the ppm detector so it consists of pulse gen pulse generator reference pulse generator and pulse generator output we apply to rs flip flop and reference pulse generator again we apply to rs flip flop circuit so pulse generator output we connected to reset pin and reference pulse generator output is connected to set pin the output of the flip flop we apply to pulse width pulse width modulation demodulator circuit so by using this demodulator so we can easily detect the ppm waves all the operation described here are linear in addition a practical ppm receiver includes a non-linear device called a slicer at its input end the input and output characteristic of the ideal slicer as shown in this figure so this is the input and output relations of the ideal slicer so this is the slicing level where the slicing level is normally set at approximately half the peak pulse amplitude of of the receiver ppm wave the function of the slicer is to prevent the position of the edges of of the receiver pulses as modified by noise and remove everything else it does so by producing almost rectangular pulses with fairly sharp leading and trailing edges at the same instant as the corresponding edges of the received pulses thus in a loose sense the slicer act as a noise cleaning device in that the final noise level 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 at the output of the receiver is greatly reduced by eliminating all the noise in the received ppm wave except in the neighborhood of the leading and trailing edges the output of the slicer is differentiated and then half wave rectified is yielding a very short pulses approximating an impulse each time the amplitude of the pulse in the received ppm wave is passes through a slicing level and this figure this figure it shows the nth pulse of a ppm wave and and this is this figure it shows the short pulse produced by an operation described herein 
as the pulse passes through the slicing level so this is the slicing level and this is the reference point and this is the pulses m into nts and this is the slicing level and this is the slicing point output of the slicers and this figure shows the approximate delay in apply to short pulse and the corresponding pdm pulse as shown in this figure so this is the corresponding pdm pulse and this is the delay so having converted the received or noisy ppm wave into a pulse duration modulation wave or pulse width modulation wave with the same modulation the receiver then produces to reconstruct the original baseband signal m of t n in the manner the main function of the slicer and main function of the slicer is to reduces the noise factor or eliminates the noises present in present in the receiver model how to find out the noise present in the pulse position modulation so if you want to find out the noise present in the ppm modulation first first we have to find out the figure of merit if you want to find out the figure of merit we have to find out the snr output and snr channel so in a ppm system the transmitted information is contained in a relative position of the modulated pulses the presence of additive noise affect the performance of such a system the output signal to noise ratio assuming a full load sinusoidal modulation is therefore the snr output is equal to pi square into b subscript t into ts square into a square divided by 32 into n not so pi is the constant value and bt is the transmission signal bandwidth and ts is the sampling time and a is the amplitude of the signal and n not is the spectrum noise spectrum density the average noise power in the message bandwidth w is equal to w into n not the channel signal to noise ratio is the snr channel is equal to 3 into a square divided by 4 t square bt w into n not so here a is the amplitude of the signal amplitude of the signal ts is the sample time bt is the transmission bandwidth and omega and n not is equal to message bandwidth so this w is equal to w into n not so this is this is approximately is equal to power spectrum density so sn this is the snr output equation and this is the snr channel equation so using this two equation so we have to find out the figure of merit so figure of merit is equal to snr output divided by snr channel thus the figure of merit of the ppm system by using a raised cosine pulse as follows so this is the raised cosine signal the amplitude is a divided by transmission bandwidth for example this is the raised cosine so this is the one cos series signal and this is another cos series signal and this is the next cos series signal and transmission bandwidth it varies from minus bt to plus bt and this is the raised cosine series signal and amplitude level is a divided by bt so here our main intention is to find out the figure of merit so we know that figure of merit is equal to snr output divided by snr channel so we know that snr output is equal to pi square bt into t a square a square divided by 32 n not and snr channel is equal to 3 a square divided by 4 t s into bt into omega into n not so simplify this after simpli after simpli after simplification so we get figure of merit is equal to pi square divided by 
24 into bt square into ts cube into omega so this is the figure of merit for ppm waves now we will look into comparison between pulse amplitude modulation pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation so this is the pulse amplitude modulated waveform here carrier signal amplitude is varying according with respect to modulating signal in pulse width modulation width of the carrier signal carrier signal is varying according with respect to modulating signal in pulse position modulation technique the position of the pulses is varying with according with respect to pulse width modulation in pulse amplitude modulation technique amplitude is varied amplitude is varied in pulse width modulation width is varied in pulse position modulation pulse is varied in pulse amplitude modulation bandwidth is depends on the width of the pulses in pulse width modulation bandwidth it depends on the rise time of the pulses in pulse position modulation the bandwidth is depends on the rise time of the pulses in pulse amplitude modulation instantaneous transmitter power is varying with the amplitude of the pulses in pulse width modulation instantaneous transmitter power is varies with the amplitude and width of the pulses in pulse position modulation instantaneous transmitter power remains constant with the width of the pulses in pulse amplitude modulation system is complexity is very high in pulse width modulation the system complexity is very low in pulse position modulation system complexity is low in pulse amplitude modulation noise interference is very high in pulse width modulation noise interference is low in pulse position modulation noise interference is low in pulse amplitude modulation it is similar to amplitude modulation pulse width modulation is similar to frequency modulation in pulse position modulation is similar to phase modulation so pulse amplitude modulation is similar to amplitude modulation here amplitude is varying with respect to message signal so pulse width modulation is similar to frequency modulation so in frequency modulation we get the f maximum and f minimum so similarly in pulse width modulation we received the maximum frequency pulse maximum frequency signal and minimum frequency signal in ppm is similar to phase modulation so here with respect to phase the frequency is varying so if you want to design if you want to generate the ppm ppm signal first we have to generate the pulse width modulation thank you